everyone in this video we want to continue where we left off from previous video so if you haven't watched that video uh, please go ahead and watch that first and come back and continue watching also make sure to subscribe and I'm gonna upload more interesting videos soon so if you remember from from the previous video we drive the energy level diagram of cyclobutadiene which you can see on the right hand side uh, and as you can see there are two unpaired electron in the system and uh, there are three level energy levels and um, two of which have the same energy and this is our Hamiltonian matrix that we derived in the previous video and as you can see the diagonal elements are all alpha which is nothing but the energy of the electron in 2pz orbital and here we are assuming that um, each electron can interact with its nearest neighbors so the site 1 can interact with site 2 and site 4 and we ignore the interactions between the site 1 and site 3 so and uh, also we we assume that this interaction is beta we call it beta it's a negative number but we just use a parameter in this case and and the other elements are just zero because we, we ignore the interactions and if you remember there are four eigenvalues uh, because we have a 4 by 4 matrix and, and these are our eigenvalues which are, which, are, which are nothing but the energies now in this video we want to drive eigenvectors corresponding to each eigenvalue and in order to do that we need to solve the eigenvalue problem or eigenvalue equation as you can see here um, H is nothing but the Hamiltonian matrix and lambda um, uh, corresponds to each eigenvalue in this case for the first one for the first energy level we have alpha plus 2 beta and I is nothing but the identity matrix and C1 is the eigenvector that we need to solve for so this is nothing but just a system of linear equation basically and what we need to do is we need to solve for these four parameters C1, C2, C3 and C4 and the, this term in parentheses is nothing but just subtracting alpha plus 2 beta from all diagonal elements of our Hamiltonian and the other elements are just remain unchanged and if we do the multiplication we arrive at this uh, system of linear equation which is not mm, hard to solve and if we solve for uh, these four parameters uh, we're gonna arrive at this eigenvector 1 1 1 but note that there is a coefficient of one half in front of it and, and you cannot derive this coefficient from this system of linear equation this this just gives you four ones and the reason why we have this one half is because we always assume that the wave function or our vector is normalized this means that c1 squared plus c2 squared plus c3 squared from plus c4 squared is equal to one technically it is the absolute value because um, the um, c1, c2, c3 and c4 can be complex numbers but here we just have real numbers so as you can see um, if you plug in one half in this equation we're going to get one fourth, one fourth, one fourth and one fourth and it gives us one and it's, it means that our vector is normalized this procedure is exactly the same for all non-degenerate energy levels so this means that for this top energy level alpha minus 2 beta the procedure is exactly the same the only difference is that we need to subtract alpha minus 2 beta from all diagonal elements of our Hamiltonian matrix and then we need to solve for our new four parameters uh, which gives us another system of linear equations and if we solve for these four parameters we're going to arrive at a new eigenvector 1 negative 1 1 and negative 1 and again we have this one half coefficient in front of that in order to make sure that our eigenvector is normalized now here comes the tricky part the tricky part is for degenerate energy levels so whenever we have it we have a degenerate energy level we cannot uniquely define our eigenvector by solving this eigenvalue problem because as you can see when you subtract alpha from all of the diagonal elements we're going to get zeros 
and we, we don't have four independent linear equations. Instead, we have two independent linear equations and we have four parameters. So there's no way to determine these four parameters uniquely. And so these are the two independent linear equations that we get. C2 plus C4 is equal to zero and C1 plus C3 equals to zero. So the only information that we have for our eigenvector for corresponding to this degenerate energy level is that C2 is equal to negative C4 and C1 is equal to negative C3. But what is interesting is that you can arbitrarily choose an eigenvector that satisfies this um, or these two equations and then your second eigenvector must be orthogonal to the, to the first one. So what this means is that we can arbitrarily choose an eigenvector, a normalized eigenvector, which satisfy these two equations. So as you can see, 1, 1, negative 1, and negative 1 uh, satisfy, satisfies those two equations because C1 is equal to negative C3 and C2 is equal to negative C4. And then we have to make sure that C4 is orthogonal to this C3. So this means that the inner product of these two vectors should equal to zero. So in terms of matrices, this means that we need to transpose this column vector to a row vector and then uh, multiply it by our, our new eigenvector C4. And again, if we plug in C1, C2 um, into that equation for C4, we're going to arrive at this equation and we have a new equation that gives us C1 is equal to negative C2. So this means that C4, in C4, we have, in, in, in a general format, we have C1, negative C1, negative C1, and C1 based on our new equation. Uh, if we combine it with these two equations that we already had. And in order to um, find the value of, of C1, we just need to make sure that it is a normalized eigenvector. So we just need to solve this. And this means that C4 is going to be 1 half, and then we have 1, negative 1, negative 1, and 1 and C3 is equal to 1 half, 1, 1, negative 1, and negative 1. And you can easily um, multiply these two, I mean inner product, calculate the inner product of these two vectors, and as you can see, 1 times 1 is 1, plus 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, so it's going to be 0, then negative 1 times negative 1 is going to be 1, plus negative 1 times 1, which is 0. So these two are orthogonal to each other. So now we arrived at, 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 um, at the eigenvectors that we are looking for and we have four different eigenvectors corresponding to these energy level diagrams. But these are the abstract notations that people usually use, usually physicists use in order to describe these orbitals. But chemists um, really like to draw and look at these orbitals and the sh how the shape of these orbitals are. So in, um, now we're, we want to actually look at these orbitals and their shapes and how they look like. And there's a famous uh, theory um, that assumes that each molecular orbital can be written as a linear combination of its atomic orbitals and um, it is sometimes called LCAO linear combination of atomic orbitals. So this means that each of these molecular orbitals that you can see here, so these are four molecular orbitals, right, can be written as a linear combination of its atomic orbitals. So we have four electrons in four 2pz orbitals on each carbon atom. So if, if you look at this structure of cyclobutadiene, you can see that there are four sites and we have four electrons and so every single molecular orbital can be written as a linear combination of these two pz orbitals and each lobe has a different sign we're assuming that 
um, the, the white lobe has a positive side and the grayish uh, lobe has a negative side and by sign I mean the sign of the wave function um, because the electron density is exactly the same because the electron density is proportional to the size squared okay so the easiest linear combination of atomic orbitals is just adding the, the four orbitals that we have so the, the the first molecular orbital would be 2pz1 plus 2pz2 plus 2pz3 plus 2pz4 so if you look at the the orbitals as you can see there's no change in the sign of the orbital as you go through from from site 1 for example site 2 site 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 so there's no change in the sign of the orbital in this plane so this means that there is no nodal plane we, we ignore the, the nodal plane that goes through these orbitals perpendicular to this plane um, what is important here is that um, the more nodal planes your orbital your Morocco orbital uh, has the, the higher the energy level would be so here there's zero nodal plane uh, and it has the lowest energy alpha plus 2 beta as you can see in this energy level diagram so in order to derive other um, molecular orbitals we can just go one by one by adding one nodal plane and see how the orbitals would look like so the next one would be we just need to add one nodal plane so there are basically two different combinations that we can uh, do the first one is well we just assume that the nodal plane goes through the CC bonds so this means that when you go from the right hand side to the left hand side you can see there's a change in the sign of the orbital it goes so the the, the 2pz orbital on the right hand side is actually flipped so and as you can see the atomic orbital in the atomic orbital basis you're gonna have 2pz1 plus 2pz2 minus 2pz3 which is nothing but plus negative 2pz3 so this means that you just flip this orbital negative 2pz4 but now there is another combination that you can have here which is the nodal plane goes through the the atoms cc atoms so instead of just going through the bonds this nodal plane can go through the atoms and in this case this means that the, the probability of finding the electron on carbon is zero um, so this means that site 1 and site 3 do not contribute to our uh, molecular orbital and the coefficients would be zero and only site 2 and site 4 would contribute to our molecular orbital wave function and because there should be a change in the sign of the wave function the atomic orbital so the 2pz should be negative 2pz2 negative 2pz4 and then uh, and these two are degenerate they have the same energy because they have the same number of nodal planes the plane that goes through cc bond or just carbon sites and the last one which is the highest in energy has two nodal planes and going through cc bonds and so this means that you're going to have 2pz1 minus 2pz2 then you have a plus 2pz3 minus 2pz4 and the the sign of the uh, the atomic or 2pz orbital will change whenever you go from uh, one side of the plane to the other side and this has the highest energy in our energy level diagram all right i guess that's all for today um if you like the video make sure to like hit the like button and i just want to tell you that in the next video i want to talk about quantum computing and specifically how does a quantum computer actually create entangled qubits until next time stay tuned